let's get into it. Just let me get my slides up. I think they're all good. I think they're all good. Let me just, that's working. Cool, I think that's working. Hello everybody, thank you very much for coming along. My name's Jay, I am one of the expert IELTS teachers here at E2 Language. If you need help with your IELTS test and check out the website, sign up for free, lots of practice material. But today what we're going to do is we're going to look at the question type that makes every student's heart flutter. That is true, false, not given. This is a confusing one, and it's really the difference between false and not given that gets everybody confused. So if you're doing the IELTS, you should know that there are 11 different task types. This one is task type two, true, false, not given. We've looked at the other ones. They're on YouTube or they're on the website with practice material. Let me explain this task to you in detail. Okay, so what's gonna happen is this. First of all, you're going to have an instruction and it's always the same instruction. Questions one to eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Do the da, 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 da. True, if the statement agrees with the information. False, if the statement contradicts the information. Not given, if there's no information. So what you do is this. You go to number one and you ask yourself, does this statement say the same thing as the text? Let's say, for example, it comes from here. So do these two say the same thing? If yes, if they say the same thing, you'll write true. Same thing here. Or does this statement contradict the text, say something different, then it will be false. Or the one that gets everybody, is this statement not actually mentioned in the text? in which case it will be not given. Let me explain this in more detail because I think the problem lies with the difference between false and not given, okay? Watch this little demonstration carefully because it will explain what this task is testing you on. And if I give you a real life scenario, you go, ah, I see what it's all about. Here's the method. So here we have a happy couple, right? These guys are in love. They're gonna get married and they're gonna buy a house. And so they've come to talk to the real estate agent here. Here's the real estate agent, this woman here. Now the agent is talking about the house and she's saying the house has two bedrooms, sorry, the house has two large bedrooms and an indoor swimming pool, okay? Let's read that again to make sure we've got it. The house has two large bedrooms and an indoor swimming pool. Okay, cool. Later on that day, the happy couple are at home and the guy who's a bit of a moron says, I like that the house has two big bedrooms, an outdoor swimming pool and a games room. So what is true, what is false and what is not given here? Okay, so she says, True, it has two big bedrooms. Well done, darling, that's a good thing you said. False, it has an indoor swimming pool. He said outdoor swimming pool. False, it has an indoor swimming pool. And not given, she didn't mention, the real estate agent didn't mention anything about a games room. And then he says, hmm, I only got one out of three. She says, darling, you're a 5.5. And he says, I better sign up to E2 language. She says, that's a good idea. Okay, I know that was funny, but so this is what you're going to write on your answer sheet. True, false, not given, true, false, not given, something like this. I hope you're ready to do this. I'm going to time you, put you under test conditions. Please try your hardest. We'll go through the answers one by one at the end and I will explain why they are the way they are. Here we go, you have two minutes to answer, I think the first three questions.
Okay, I just I'm glad you guys enjoyed my uh, little cartoon before. Okay, that's two minutes. Don't worry if you haven't finished because we'll go through it at the end. Let's do questions. I believe. Well, I'm just going to leave it up to you. You've got two minutes. Okay, this may be going a little bit fast, but again, we're going to go through it slowly in a minute when I show you the answers. Let's do the final questions here. All right. Again, I pushed you for speed then. Um, a couple of things have popped up, which I want to answer right now. The first one is, can I write TF or NG? Well, read the instructions. Always read the instructions. It says here, write true, false, or not given. So can you write TF or NG? No. You must write true, false, not given. The second thing that has come up is, 
Jay, you're not giving us enough time. We don't know uh, if it's not given or not because we don't know which paragraph it's in. That's one of the problems about not given is you may be tempted to write not given because you just can't find it. Remember, it's going to follow a sequential path. So question one will come at the top in, the pre, in one of the first paragraphs, and then it will follow the same order as the questions, the paragraphs and the questions follow the same order. Okay, so there's that. What else is going on? Okay, the big thing in with this one is keywords. Okay, anyway, let's go through the answers. I'm gonna show you why the answers are the way they are. Here we go. So first of all, you needed to find a keyword here to start off because if you're reading up here, there's nothing here, there's nothing. Here we have half an hour, here we have 30 minutes. So we found our corresponding synonym. So we know where to read. Now we need to confirm or, uh, uh, or say not, say true, false or not given for these two. So number one, you should not arrive more than half an hour before your allocated starting time. In other words, don't arrive more than 30 minutes before you start. Here it says, please arrive no earlier than 30 minutes before that time. True, false or not given. In other words, do these say the same thing in which it will be true? Do these two contradict each other, in which case it will be false? Or is there no information? Well, there's certainly information, so it must be true or false. The answer is, for this one, true. In other words, these two things say the same thing. It's kind of tricky because there's a negative in there, there's a not, there's an earlier, then there's a later. It's, it's tricky stuff, but that one is true. Number one is true. If you got true, well done, that was a hard one. Let's do number two. Your rider identity card will be sent to you before the event. Now, the key word that you would search for would be rider identity card. There's nothing mentioned about a rider identity card in these two paragraphs. And even in the next paragraph, there's nothing mentioned about it being sent. So this one, is it gonna be true, false or not given if there's no information on this? This one's going to be not given, number two. Number three, some roads may have normal traffic flow on them. The passage says, although many roads are closed to oncoming traffic, this is not always the case. And you should be aware of the possibility that there could be vehicles coming in the opposite direction. So do these two say the same thing? Do they contradict each other or is there no information? I hope you've written on your answer sheet true for number three, because it is true. Those two statements basically say the same thing. They certainly don't contradict each other. Number four. All right, so this is the thing, right? So now we're up to number four. Helmets are compulsory for all participants. Now, the key word, of course, is helmet. There's nothing here about helmet. But then we go to the next passage. Uh, we see the head subheading helmet. Helmets are compulsory for all participants. The passage says, every year we are delighted to see more riders wearing protective helmets, but we must see every cyclist on the ride wearing one. Therefore, or in other words, helmets are compulsory for all participants. Let's break this down because, okay, so we've got the keyword helmets, which is fine. We've got helmets, compulsory, must, and we've got participants, every cyclist. You can see the way in which the IELTS use synonyms to say the same thing, okay? So this one is true. Number four is true. Number five, refreshments are free to all participants during the ride. Okay, let's go back though, because here we have something interesting happening because let's say we're doing number five and it's about refreshments and we scan read, nothing refreshments there, attractive assistance, the marshal, thumbs down, motorcycle, no, nothing about refreshments there in case of a breakdown. Okay, there's the rider identity card, but it's nothing about that. Um, okay, nothing about refreshments here. 
So we had to skip this half of this paragraph, skip this paragraph, skip this paragraph. So we're now at uh, this paragraph here, which is about refreshment stops. Refreshments are free to all participants during the ride. This says, look out for these refreshments along the route or route. Most are organized by voluntary clubs and their prices give you real value for money. Their prices give you real value for money. Refreshments are free, but they're charging you money. In other words, these things are contradicting each other. Therefore, what's the answer? The answer is going to be, oops, false. Number six, if you need a rest, you must get off the road. And we scan, read these paragraphs, and there's nothing said about taking a rest. Therefore, if there's no information on this, there's nothing mentioned about it, the answer is going to be not given for number six. Number seven, first aid staff can provide cycle capes. I want you to read this and tell me whether it's true, false, or not given. Well, it says here, first aid staff can provide cycle capes, but here it says our first aid staff can only supply bin liners. So it is mentioned, but it's not saying the same thing. In fact, it's saying something contradictory. Therefore, this one's going to be false. Oh, before we look at number eight, if you are not yet a subscriber to the E2 Language channel, which now has 100,000 subscribers, yay! Do click the subscribe button and make sure the notifications are on so when we do do a live stream, you'll get notification on your phone. Uh, you can watch these live classes, which is cool. Uh, yeah, thanks for all of you who have subscribed. Be sure to share this video with your friends if you think it's good or if you know somebody who's taking the IELTS as well. There's a lot of junk on YouTube and it's hard to find the good stuff. And when you do find the good stuff, I think you should share it. So do feel free to share it uh, with your friends if you think it's good. Okay, number eight, bike events will charge you for the return of your bike. Please tell me if it's true, false or not given this statement. Okay, bike events will charge you for the return of your bike. Bike events, there's your key word. See, this is again, you don't want to just start reading here and read all the way through. It's going to take too much time. So what you do is you find a keyword like bike events. Here, first aid staff would be a great keyword. Here, refreshments, helmets. These are all great keywords, right? Bike events. And here it is here. Bike events will hold your bike for three months after which it may be disposed of. You will be charged for all costs incurred in returning your cycle. Bike events will charge you for the return of your bike. Okay, is it true, false or not given? Well, as far as I'm concerned, these two say the same thing in different words. Therefore, it's going to be true. Your answer sheet, my friends, should look like this. Number one is true, two, not given three true, four true, five false, six not given, seven false, and eight true. Please, into the comments below, put what your score is. What did you get out of eight? Maybe you got one or four or eight. Who knows? That would be cool. And before I leave you, or before I go and answer some questions, check out this website, e2language.com. If you're not a free member, sign up for free. We've got heaps and heaps of stuff that will help you to pass your IELTS test as soon as possible. That's all, check it out. It's good, it's good, it's good. All right, let's have a look on in Zoom and YouTube and see what questions we've got. Question number one was tricky, says Narges. I guess it is not given. Well, yeah, Chris, question number one was the toughest. I think question one was the toughest question. So if you got that right, very well done. What was your score? 
65857867. Nice work, guys. That's looking pretty good. That's pretty good scores. Five and seven. What do we get on YouTube Live? Uh, I'm going to read out some names of people who got eight. It's a legendary effort. Uh, Metasonia got eight. Niha got eight. Jay Cardia got eight. Adit Sharma got eight. Chahal got eight. Nice work. Everybody else, good scores. Well done. Um, maybe it's because there's great teaching involved. All right, if you have any questions, pop them into the chat and I will answer them. Jay, should number seven be not given instead of being false? No, because it was contradictory. If it contradicts, okay, so it's given, but it's saying something different, then it's false. If it's just not given, then it's not given. Okay. Uh, Jay, how many true, false, not given questions are there for general IELTS? Well, usually you'll get about, usually you'll get about, you'll either get yes, no, not given or true, false, not given. We'll do yes, no, not given next week. Um, pretty similar, but you'll get about, yeah, about eight to 10, I guess. Jay, please help in writing. It is very difficult to go from 6.5 to seven. If you haven't seen our YouTube videos or signed up to the platform, do that right now, because let's just say we've uncovered the reasons why people get stuck on 6.5. Yes, there are some good reasons why people get stuck on 6.5. Jay, how long are the passages? Um, I guess they're all about sort of 10 paragraphs, quite long, quite long. I think they're about six, 600 to 800 words. Uh, Jay, are you going to do another video about reading next week? Uh, yes, I will. While listening... Yeah, okay, here's an interesting one. While I was doing my listening, I suffered from what I can imagine is a panic attack and I couldn't complete my exam properly. This is a, a, this is a thing that happens in these exams because they're so high stakes and they're so pressure filled, you're going to be really bloody nervous. Or if you're not, it's probably weird if you're not, to be honest, because uh, these, yeah, it's, it's the way it is. Um, what can you do about it? It's not much. It's just sort of that strange sensation in your body when your heart's beating and your stomach's churning, your hands are sweating. And, but you just have to concentrate on what's in front of you. Okay, so if you're doing the reading, I mean, the beautiful thing about that is you don't have to be a part of these sensations. You can just, well, you might still feel them, but make sure you're just concentrating on what you're reading focusing on what you're doing rather than what your body's doing. I think that's the only way around that really. Yeah. Make sure you get a good night's sleep. Don't drink alcohol the night before. If you're susceptible to coffee, if coffee makes you nervous, don't drink coffee, have a big breakfast. I think having a big breakfast, high fat breakfast, not high carbohydrate, high fat is good for breakfast. The energy just lasts longer. It has a greater density per calorie, something like that. Um, okay, cool, that's fine. Noted, uh, Nuggets, thank you for that. Um, okay, Jay, when can we have a live session on matching headings? I've already done that, it's on YouTube, check it out. Sometimes there is some information missing in the question. Should I look about the missing info in the passage or question for not given? Yeah. I mean, you have to, so let's say you've got, let's say you've got, let's go back. This is a good question. I like this question. Okay. Let's do this question again. So this is a not given question, right? And it says here, if you need a rest, you must get off the road. And so you start scan reading. And you start looking for words like rest, refreshment stops. There's nothing in here about taking a rest. Okay, nothing in here about taking a rest. Nothing in here about taking a rest. I think I'm going to mark this not given. Let's go to the next one. First aid staff can dot, 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 dot. Well, it's talking about first aid staff here. Therefore, I'm going to mark this one not given. Now I'll concentrate on, sorry, I'll mark number six not given concentrate on seven. 
So yeah, you have to have a look around, but if you're starting to think it's not there, it's not there, it's not there. And if the next question's coming before it, then you can rest assured that you're probably right. It is not given. Um, okay. Here's a good question. Jay, do we have to write true, false, not given in capital letters? Well, again, if the instructions say write true, false, not given, and the instructions are in capital letters, you use capital letters. I don't, just be careful. You have to be very careful in the IELTS because little things can cost you. So it, read the instructions, follow the instructions. Um, yeah, cool. Um, Okay, next week I'll do yes, no, not given. Um, yeah. Mm, yeah, okay, so Tuskin finds matching headings very difficult. I agree with you, Tuskin. I think matching headings is probably the most difficult of the IELTS question tasks. Uh, cool. Guys, I'm gonna leave it there. Um, I think I've answered everyone's questions. There's some questions popping up on YouTube Live. Thanks very much for coming along. I hope that was helpful. Uh, it's all about practice, of course. So it's one thing to know the methods. It's another thing to put pen to paper and actually practice, okay? So if you do need some good quality, high quality practice materials, if you want some feedback on your writing, if you want to take a 45 minute one-on-one -on -one tutorial with an ex-IELTS examiner who will look at your writing or take you through speaking, then do sign up to e2language.com. It's great value for money. You don't have to travel. You can do it from home. Best teachers in the world. La, 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 la. Cool. I'll see you guys soon.